Welcome to the Ant-Man channel on this 5th, uh, this Tuesday, the 5th of February, 2013. I have an article in front of me by Bob Unruh. Bob Unruh joined WND in 2006 after nearly three decades with the, with the Associated Press AP, as well as several upper Midwest newspapers where he covered everything from legislative battles and sports to tornadoes and homicidal survivalists. He is also a photographer whose cinetic work has been used commercially. <clears throat> this is front page. He writes, Maddow just can't stop talking about WND. See the video where MSNBC entertainer, credit entertainer, that's a good one, credits online news source. Uh, I just saw the video myself. If you want to go see the video, it's on WND.com under Maddow just can't stop talking about WND. I saw the video. It's hilarious. Um, he's targeting Alex Jones. She's targeting Alex Jones. She's targeting... The fact that he has more viewers now than any other corporate uh, mainstream news channel because to get people's attention, she she's bringing up the things that he's talking about. She's bringing up the things that Matt Drudge is talking about. She's talking about the things the alternative media in in general talks about. So she um, <clears throat> so where did she get this news? She's getting it from the alternative media, but then trying to twist it so that it sounds like some. It's funny, too, because if you look at the video, she talks, like, the left, the, the uh, democratic left, fake liberals, whatever you call them, they talk to their audiences like they're children, man. I mean, it is bizarre. I just noticed, like, and I never really noticed it on this scale before, but Rachel Maddow literally talks to you like you're a kid, and if you believe in the truth, you're just a little dumb kid, aren't you? Oh, you're silly. Well, you know, uh, Rachel Maddow, your opinions don't hold up any fact. Your opinions are opinions, and the only thing that you could get from um, the news that you get is it's, where is it coming from. Um, journalists are the only people who actually go and see this stuff for themselves. Other than that, Rachel Maddow, you're reading off a teleprompter. So what makes you think that you have some type of insight into what's going on and that we have some real problems? Oh, yeah, war. Yeah, I mean, we wouldn't have that problem if we would just, you know, chill out, but, I mean, in these days, it seems like, you know, whatever the left wants to do, it's not going to go down, so, they're not going to go down so quietly, you know, they're going to call names, they're going to kick, they're going to scream. MSNBC host Rachel Maddow says it's really hard for the left wing of the U.S. government to operate because of the other half. The conservatives are not willing to adopt the evidence she suggests is irrefutable. And she can't stop herself from ta uh, taking public swipes at WND. World Net Daily, for its reporting on some of the issues in which liberals have been unsuccessful at establishing their regime. The evidence-based world is a hard enough place to live and to operate for us as a nation without half of our domestic politics being dominated by the perceived desire to defend against the Muslim Obama Jihad on child Reagan's home. She said, Are we hampered as a nation in our ability to address real problems in the evidence-based world in our ha in if half of the people in politics do not live in, the, in that world, she wondered. And if so, how do we get it fixed? Oh, you're talking about getting rid of us. Yeah, well, that's going to be harder than you think because we're more awake than you are. On a recent show, she joined with another MSNBC host, Chris Hayes, in a call for action on the issues of climate change. Hayes said the U.S. needs to work on a treaty that governs everyone's emissions, which is ultimately what we're going to have to do or get, uh, but is stymied because of the half who doubt scientists and activists who contend man is causing catastrophic climate change. Oh yeah, we're, we're, we're bad because we breathe the air. I mean, we, yeah, we, we release a lot of carbon dioxide, or, you know, carbon dioxide, I know. We're, we're so evil because we breathe. Um, let's see. They demonize capitalism and freedom and it's working. Um, pretty much. Hayes said it discredits the U.S. in the eyes of the world to have dis disagreement over the issues, and the U.S. cannot take a leadership role because there is not enough support for the left-wing evidence to, con to convince other countries. Um, but the two did not discuss the evidence from emails leaked from the University of East Anglia, and Anglia a premier global warming advocacy center worldwide that revealed even the researchers themselves saw the globe cooling, not heating up. Well, I mean, if they're, if, you know, you never take a good crisis, you know, and not, and not use it for the left's agenda. Um, 
Yeah, they got a lot of people believing in climate change. It's kind of weird. Christopher Moncton, third Viscount Moncton of Brenchley, and a WND columnist, is considered by many to be an expert on the issue, and wrote recently about the problem with the evidence. While NASA climate alarmist James Hansen insists record summer heat and drought are caused by man-made global warming, leaked internal emails from just three summers ago reveal that he and his colleagues expressed alarm that the planet was inexplicably cooling, he wrote. Hansen, often called the godfather of global, of global warming, asserted earlier this month that blistering heat across the United States is so rare that if it can't be anything but the man-made global warming he has been warning about for decades, Moncton wrote. He noted Hansen told the AP, we are not experiencing scientific fact. But Moncton noted in 2009, as the thermometer, or thermometer excuse me, hit record lows in America, he and other climate scientists panicked in a flurry of emails. Skeptics will be all over us. The world is really cooling. The models are no good. Moncton noted in an October 12, 2009 email in Hansen of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies in New York, fellow warming alarmist Kevin Trenberth of the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado asked, Where the heck is global warming? Trenberth's email, bomb Bombshell, was the fact that we can't account for the lack of warming at the moment and it is a travesty that we can't. Maddow set up the discussion with Hayes by poking fun at those who criticize the U.S. handling of terrorist attacks on the U.S. operations in Benghazi and have unanswered questions about what went down there. She noted Senator Rand Paul's questions, did, uh, which did not generate answers when Clinton was testifying before the U.S. Senate. Rand Paul talked about the theory he has cooked up. After that hearing to who else... But the website World Net Daily Maddow noted. Well, I saw the video for myself. You can go see it absolutely if you want. And uh, what you're going to notice, though, is that she takes a bunch of things that are true and she mixes them together so that they sound ridiculously stupid. And then she calls it a conspiracy theory. Well, no. Well, you can't just cook up your own crazy idea and then say that we're saying it. That's just not true. Uh, the terrorist attacks on the U.S. operations in Benghazi and have the nice questions. There you go. Then she added, just for the record, this is the current issue of WorldNet Daily's monthly magazine, while showing an image of the cover, cover showing Obama in the headline, the first Muslim president, an issue that explores the Muslim influences of on Obama, who has called the Muslim prayer the sweetest sound on earth. AP documentation also confirms that Obama as a child was registered in school as a Muslim. Maddow also targets WND by pointing out that Senator Rick Santorum, the guy who came in second in the Republican presidential nomination contest this past year, is now a columnist for WND. You see how they, do you see how right I am? And I'm not even trying to be right, um, even though I am right. The left play this political game like it's a football game, like, oh, they lost, they're just mad. Oh, the guy that came in second in the Republican Party, uh, I mean, they, these people are so discredited in the way that they try to discredit others. It's, it's funny. It's funny how Maddow talks about WND so frequently, but has not, never had the courage to invite any representatives of the company on her show to respond to her silly accusations, said Joseph Farah, chief executive officer and editor of WND. This is what passes for journalism at, at MSDNC. <laughs> Joseph Farah thinks he has jokes today. Moncton noted that back in 1997, when Al Gore was president of the U.S. Senate and Democrats held the majority, a proposal to hand over ultimate power to a world group regarding climate changes was voted down 95 to nil. This article goes on and on. There's even another video here I didn't even notice. But go ahead and go look at this absolute joke of a journalist um, on, on MSNBC.com. She is... I mean, I never even had a reason not to like Rachel Maddow until now, but now that she, now that she tries to demonize us, it's kind of like, okay, well, um, you're just causing more attention to yourself. The, the worst thing that the corporate establishment can do is, they can, um, the worst thing that they can do to themselves is mention Alex Jones, mention WND, or mention truthers, or mention patriots, or and what gun activists are doing in this country. And she's going to totally attract the worst kind of attention to herself, just like Piers Morgan did. Piers Morgan had Alex Jones on the show, and it absolutely backfired on him. Um, the word got out about the guns more than, than silly, uh, you know, Jon Stewart making fun of it, and, um, 
you know, Piers, the, the, the producer at CNN even started crying. It, it's pretty hilarious, actually. But, um, you see, that's, this kind of stuff backfires on them when they try to attack us because we, we hold the truth, my friend. They're, they're, they're just kind of calling name, name calling and saying silly things. And you know what I mean? It's not really going to work on people who actually go and do the actual research. Only to the people that go and to watch, and, you know, pretty much the people that are, that are their audience are the ones that are going to stay with them. Um, and that audience is shrinking by the day, man. It's hilarious. Uh, the alternative media is winning Rachel Maddow in a desperate attempt to keep her viewers, to demonize truthers and people who, you know, just want the truth, you know. The government lies a lot, you know, hey, whoa, whoa. We gotta call that, you know, we gotta call it what it is. We gotta say, hey, you know, what, what, what's going on with you? Huh? You know, is it bad that I wanna know? No, it's not. I mean, it absolutely has a lot to do with my security and all kinds of things. Uh, but this is the world of politics today. It's a football game. <laughs>